you were looking at uh, Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits and we've got a more complicated than our original example. This circuit is, it looks simple, it's just one source, but it turns out to be a little more complicated. We want to convert the circuit at the top into one of the two below, and it doesn't matter which one. You realise from our previous example that we need to find any two of these three items, and from two of them we can find the third. So we'll start off looking for the short circuit current. Now if you look at this network it looks a little bit complicated to start with. We end up using Kirchhoff's current law. We can find the current through the 25 ohm resistor because if you look at it you'll see that one end of the 25 ohm resistor is connected to the power supply, the 25 volts. The other end of the 25 ohm resistor is connected by the short circuit back to the negative side of the power source. So 25 volts over 25 ohms, 1 amp. 1 amp is flowing through the 25 ohm resistor. We can ignore that in further analysis for the short circuit. Now we want to analyse the component of the current in the short circuit due to the rest of the resistor network, the 10 ohm, the 20 ohm, the 5 ohm and the 15 ohm. Now the 15 ohm actually plays no part because the short circuit across it means no current will flow in it. So we need to analyse the rest of this as a series parallel resistor network. So here we'll see that the 5 ohm and the 20 ohm are actually in parallel. If you look at the red line, both of those resistors are connected together on the red line and if you look at the black line, both of those resistors are connected directly together. Now we're ignoring the current flow in the short circuit at the moment because we need to find or we need to analyse the resistor network completely first. So 20 ohms in parallel with 5 ohms using the two resistors in parallel equation we find that's 4 ohms. So we replace those resistors with 4 ohms and we're down to a series network 10 ohms in series with 4 ohms in which case uh, 14 ohms and we need the current in there and hopefully my maths is correct 25 volts over 14 ohms 1.79 amps now we have to go back the other way take that current put it through a current divider work out the component of the current flowing through the 5 ohm and that component will contribute to the short circuit current so we've got uh, current in the 5 ohm resistor is the source current there, IS times 20, the opposite resistor, divided by the sum of the resistors, and we end up with 1.43 amps. So 1.43 amps is flowing through the 5 ohm resistor, and that will contribute to the short circuit current. So now, we have those two currents, 1 amp in the 25 ohm resistor, 1.43 amps in the 5 ohm resistor, and together, using uh, Kirchhoff's current law, those two will add together and hopefully give us 2.43 amps in the short circuit. So now we have our short circuit current. When we look at the open circuit voltage. Now this is a little complicated because we need to find the current through the 15 ohm resistor to find the voltage developed across it and there is no combination of series or parallel resistors there that can be resolved. Our series and parallel equations can't help us. We can't resolve this network. There is no series resistors that can be simplified. There are no parallel resistors that can be simplified. There is no combination there we can simplify. So we can't use the open circuit voltage. We don't have enough tools to deal with it. So what we'll do is we'll look for the network resistance and we're going to use part of the superposition theorem. That we're going to use source zeroing. We're going to zero the one source there is and then we're going to analyse the resistor network. So we're looking in at the two terminals and we're trying to find the resistance. Now to understand this network we need to redraw it because if you look carefully now the 25 ohm as you'll see at one end it's connected to the top wire and via the short circuit at the left hand end it's connected to the bottom wire so it's directly in parallel with the 15. If you look at the 10 ohm 
its left hand end is now connected to the bottom wire so it's directly in parallel with the 20 ohm so we can redraw this so look at that carefully you might want to stop this uh, video and come back and have a look at that and I've used some shorthand notation here but if you look at it and assume the circuit at the bottom left is correct we've got a 10 ohm directly in parallel with a 20 ohm and I've drawn that here 10 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms in series with 5 ohms and when all of that's resolved that will be in parallel with the 15 ohms which is in parallel with the 25 ohms so 10 in parallel with 20 6.66 recurring plus the 5 ohms in series 11.66 recurring in parallel with 15 in parallel with 25 so running that equation through using the parallel resistors equation we get I hope 5.2 ohms resistance so now we've got the short circuit current 2.4 amps the internal resistance 5.2 ohms and if we multiply those two together we get the open circuit voltage 12.62 volts as you realize we've now got all three items which allow us to build either our Thevenin or Norton equivalent circuit so this network was slightly too complicated to just calculate the open circuit voltage and we had to use some special techniques to calculate the internal resistance of the network <laughs>